Good morning, good morning. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. It is now December the 29th, 2021. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the Topaz suite of products because ever since I launched my Santa course in my teachable school last week, I've had so many comments and questions about how to use it, what settings, etc. So I'm going to demo that just briefly because I think it's important for you to know which which options to choose and what your settings should be. So I'm gonna go over Topaz Impressions, Topaz Glow, Topaz Clarity, and Denoise, which is literally a game changer, you guys. If you ever get in a situation where you're shooting in really low light and you know, oh my God, I gotta jump up my ISO and it's gonna be grainy and disgusting, this is the plugin for you. It's absolutely a game changer. I also picked up Topaz Sharpen AI today because everything's on sale. I got it for 50 bucks. So I'm going to try it live in front of you and give you my first impressions, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. I am just so excited to get into 2022 and I'm so thrilled that everybody appreciated my last video about why I closed my photography studio and so much support and love. I just really appreciate you guys. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in the magical land of Photoshop. So this is an image that I used a various amount of Topaz products on and also my um, my denoise. Now, I'm gonna apologize if you hear any background noise. My husband is in my studio and he is doing a bunch of construction and so there might be a few bumps that you maybe don't wanna hear, so I apologize in advance. Okay, so you can see from this edit that I shot this, it was already too laid out, it was too dark. Um, you know, here, Western Canada, and I think we shot this in November, and it was about 4.30, and it was just dark already, and it just made me sad because I had so many plans for the shoot, which we didn't get to do, but this image turned out really pretty. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to start by demoing from the same shoot, and this was without flash. This was, you know, again, about 4.30, and um, it, it, I'll show you how grainy this image is. So I'm just gonna open it back up in Adobe Camera Raw. And so if I zoom in, look at the grain, guys. And I only was at ISO 1600. I used my 105 millimeter from Sigma, and I was at 1.4 and 40 seconds on my shutter, like just brutal. So I will show you how amazing Topaz can be to fix something like this. But before I get into Topaz, I'm just gonna do some adjustments. I'm gonna add some warmth to the image. And um, because I, it was just clearly shot way, way too cool. And I'm going to bump up my shadows a bit. And I'm looking only at her right now, right? I'm not looking at the environment. Um, bump up my blacks a bit. I'm actually going to increase my highlights a bit as well. And that's good there. Okay, now I'm going to go into my masking feature, which I absolutely love. Click on my subject. And I'm going to invert that. So to three little dots, invert, and now it's strictly the background. I can see that the mask is going over her face a bit here. So I'm going to subtract that with a brush and make sure it's small. I just wanna make sure that that is not masked off because we wanna keep all of our subject out of the mask. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the masking feature in Adobe Camera Raw. I feel like it's so much better than, um, than Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm just gonna reduce the exposure and you can see where the mask was around her. So just a little bit right about there and now I'm going to pull up the blacks and the shadows a little bit and 
reduce that exposure again. I just don't want the blacks to look super clipped. Right about there. And I think that is a relatively good start. So I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to open it up back in Photoshop. And those are the adjustments that we did, which are pretty good. Okay. So go ahead and flatten it. And I'm not going to do a whole edit on this. I just want to show you how amazing denoise is for this particular image. Okay. Duplicate your layer. And we're going to come right into Topaz Studio, oop, Topaz Labs, Denoise. So it's going to open it up. This plugin takes a little bit to process, but it's you'll see how amazing it is. So now we're looking at our subject. We can really see how grainy she is. So a lot of you had issues with, you know, some of the areas are going to be sharpened and some are going to be really noisy. So the key here is to choose the perfect model that suits the image. And that's under standard, clear, low light and severe noise. And I'll show you the difference. So if you click on standard, it, it to me, it, it looks really, really crazy. It, it doesn't look good to me. It's, it's almost applied, you know, too much softening. Even if you enhance your sharpness, it's, it's still going to look weird. But you know what? This is actually a really nice tool that you can use for hair. So if you have hair that's maybe messy and stuff, come in here and enhance the sharpness and stuff and you're going to have some really cool looking effects and that's going to add to the painting look to the hair. Okay, we're going to go into clear now. And in clear, you just take a look around and you can see exactly what it's doing. And you can see down here, you, you have various settings that you can do. So for this one, I think it's pretty much re removing all of the noise everywhere. I don't see it missing any places. So clear, mm, I guess you could... Um, let's enhance the sharpness a bit because we know that this and that actually I think looks pretty pretty good I don't see any issues with less blur and grain showing up so clear looks pretty good for this particular image too if we click low light I think this is where a lot of people have issues where it selects various parts of the image and then other areas are not so I can still see a little bit of grain in various places. But overall, I would say it's pretty good. You can increase your remove noise settings and just see what happens there. So I think, you know, for various types of images, the key here is to find the one model that works best for that particular image. But still, like if you take a look at the grain difference, it's really absolutely amazing. They also have this severe noise setting and I've tried it. I haven't really had an image that, you know, has severe noise at this point, so I haven't really had to use it. So, yeah. I, I mean, it still to me looks relatively good. I don't see issues with grain showing through and blur, but um, I think for this one, I'm going to look at probably clear and again, I apologize if you hear background noise. But anyway, um, so I'm on enhanced sharpness and medium noise. And I think this is probably the one I'll go with. So just click apply. Okay, so here is our result. So if I show you the before and the after, so I can see there's still a little bit of noise here, but honestly, it's it's really not bothering me very much. And because this particular image is, it's full body, it's landscape and very far away, but for all intents and purposes, it looks pretty freaking amazing. So really happy about that. I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this. And I'll do a little tiny bit of cleanup on her, 
on her face so that we can apply some of the other plugins and get that painting look effect. I'm just going to do some really quick retouching on the shadows on her face, strictly using my dodge and burn. And I'm just in my dodge action that you can, you can get any of my actions on my, my website, nikkiart.ca. Okay, so I'm at 1% flow. I'm just going to come in and remove some of these shadows. This is the quick and easy way to to do it. And you can see that there really won't be any requirement for frequency separation on her skin because it's already really, really soft. So as always, just come in and get rid of those, those little shadows that, you know, happen to all of us. Mostly it's just because my OCD won't let me move forward without getting rid of some of these, uh, <laughs> these shadows. And you can just enhance various parts. I'm just doing this really quickly, rough and dirty. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time because, like I said, I just want to show you how to use these amazing products. So I got to get rid of that because that'll drive me crazy. I'll show you the final edit after because I will complete an edit on this. I never like to start something and then not finish it. But yeah, okay. I think this is okay. Just zoom out. Like I said, rough and dirty guys. Okay. And then just zoom out and I'm just gonna reduce that a little bit so it blends. And that is it guys, I just really needed to get my OCD off of the table. <laughs> okay, let's flatten this sucker and duplicate your layer, okay? Now, typically what I would do before I do all of this is I would go in and I would really focus in on the colors and remove this little hook on the tree, things like that. I just wanna show you some things that Topaz can do. So we're gonna start with, I usually start with Clarity and Clarity is just going to focus the attention on your subject a little bit and then from clarity we'll go into impression and then from impression we'll go into glow. So now we are in clarity. So I'm just going to go into my, you have exposure, you have clarity, you can just really use clarity right here if you want. If you really want to focus in on your precision contrast, you come down here and you have micro, low, medium, and high. And this is where you really can really just fine tune the clarity. And I know someone asked me in my teachable school, what's the difference between Adobe Camera Raw clarity and Topaz clarity? Well, Adobe Camera Raw is just like a global clarity that really adds quick, dirty contrast, whereby in Topaz here, you can really focus in on exactly what it is that you want to do. Okay, so we're gonna focus on her because we, we are going to brush anything off of this. So I'm gonna look at my lighting and contrast. So micro, now this is really focusing on the tiny minute details and I'll just zoom in a little bit more. So you can see the before and the after and I'm not caring about the background, right? I'm just looking here, low, is a little bit stronger. Once you get down to high, that's when you got your severe contrast. And that's something that you use for more like the Santa portraits and stuff when you really want that kind of grungy clarity on the old man, right? But for this, you don't really want the grunginess. You just want some nice 
detail added back for clarity on her. And that's really about it. So every single image is going to be different, right? So you're going to have to adjust your sliders accordingly. So I'm going to bump up my shadows just a bit because if you look at her hair, it's, it's really black and clipped and that's because of the contrast, right? So the shadow, you want to pull those up a bit, something like that. Um, try the mid-tones, just play with your sliders and see what you like once you're in it. Even saturation, like I, I like making her hair look really red. So this is really going to saturate that a bit more and just click OK. So you can see that it's applied those to the entire image, right? So all you do is hold down Alt or Option, click Mask, and now with a white brush, just brush that effect directly onto your subject. And that's always my first step. We want to make sure that all of the attention is on our subject and not on the environment. Now, if you want the ground around her to have more clarity, that's usually a good thing to do as well. And I just try to make sure that I get the entire mask. So that's before and after. I'm just going to zoom in for you. Before and after. So it just added that little extra bit of sharpening. Now I could go into my new sharpen AI, but for this image, I I don't really want that effect because we're going for the more painterly portrait. I think sharpen AI should be used for more, you know, true photography stuff. But anyway, I will show you. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten. Duplicate my layer again. I'll always duplicate my layer. And now I'm going to come into Glow. So in Glow, I usually only use the contrast and color which is this one here. So you choose it and you can see that it adds a nice glow, but it also, in my mind anyway, tends to darken it up. So I open up my HSL color tuning menu and overall lightness, I'll just bump it up. Because this effect you do want all over the image, you don't want it just on the subject. Um, you can really focus in on various colors. So like if we go to greens, you can see the red will highlight the greens. So if you choose green, you can adjust that lightness as well. So you can really focus in on it. Um, if we choose yellow, yellow is there too. Same thing, you can bump that up. And this, I would have assumed it was yellow, but you can see based on this, it's not, well, I guess it is choosing it a little bit. But that's okay, we can reduce that again after. Let's go into our oranges here and we're gonna increase the lightness as well. Okay, so something like that is about it for me. I don't usually want a vignette and I'll just click okay. So with this particular plugin, I don't usually ever use it, um, you know, completely at 100%. So I usually always come and adjust the opacity to suit the image. So this here is at about 40%, but you can see that it's added some really nice dreamy light quality to it. So we're gonna leave it at about 40 and we're gonna go ahead and flatten the image. Duplicate it. Now we're gonna come into impression. So this is when you can really start playing with different painting looks with this particular plugin. And as always, you can just use the impression workflow, which is the very first one, and I use this one often. Another one of my favorites is in the oil paint category, and I usually like the Jim Sala one. So this is the Jim Sala one, and you can see it's more defined, which I think matches this image a bit better. Now you're gonna see a lot of times these little white spots, and this is fixed this way. So you can just increase your brush size a bit and that usually gets rid of those little white spots. This particular filter also has a texture applied so if you scroll down on the bottom you're going to see the texture. I don't want that canvas texture in the image. I just want it to be you know something like this. You can also go to your lighting tab and increase your brightness which helps and I usually 
I usually want my strokes to be not quite so wide and the length and spill is where it spills over from the edge detail so I typically reduce the spill as well. So something like that and just click OK. With this particular plugin as well, I never again use it at 100%. So I come in and I start reducing it. And re really, honestly, I'm looking at the environment way more than the subject. So I like to find a place where it looks like a painting, not photographic. Um, and then what I do is I'll just add a mask to this and using a black brush, not at 100%, usually around 50, and I'll come in and I'll brush it, usually right off of the skin, because I don't, I don't want, I feel like with dodging and burning, you can create the painterly effect without the, the distractions and objects that this particular plugin applies to your image too, right? So I usually like to take it off skin and now I'll reduce it a bit more and then I'll just take it down from her a little bit. So painting like but not over the top like the rest of the image. But you know what? Play with it. You can figure out what works best for you and what you like. Um, I'll take it off her hair a little bit and a little bit around her because there's usually, you know, objects and, and things like that. So I want a little bit more detail in the hair because my hairstylist did such an amazing job. So we'll just remove this like so. So if you look at the before and the after, it's really given it much more of a painting kind of quality look to it, right? And there's still a few white spots, but you can easily just come in and clone it out. So I'm just going to feather that mask out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make sure that I took it off all the areas that I want it off. So spill. Remember when I talked about the spill? That's what the spill is. It kind of puts a halo like around the edges. So I like to kind of brush that off because I feel like it it's too distracting to me and it looks like a plug-in and I don't want that. So just watch your spill and zoom out. Okay? So before and after. And that's impression. Now I'm going to flatten this and duplicate my layer and just using my patch tool, I'm going to come in and just get rid of those little white dots. And also I was going to get rid of that anyway. And you know, just whatever you feel is distracting to your eye, I usually recommend getting rid of. So this is distracting me as well. So I'm just going to try and get rid of it really quickly. hear my husband drilling I'm so sorry guys <laughs> but he's still off work right now and he likes to get all his projects done when he's not working so I have to I have to let him you know okay that's good enough see what I did there I just kind of I'll just blur that out just a smidge okay so that distraction's gone, that's helping me out. So that's before and after with our little dots. Also, this I feel like is just too dark, so I'm gonna come in and clone it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So go ahead and flatten. And you know, from this point, 
I would go ahead and do my retouch and everything. But in all honesty, I usually do all the retouching stuff first and then I do this last. And after you find all of your various, um, I'm going to duplicate the layer. After you do all of your different layered topaz um, stuff, you can come in and you could do your color toning, adjust your lighting, all that other stuff. But oh my gosh, so, so fun to use. And let's just come in and do another impression so I can show you that you can come in and you can stack these and really create more of a painting. So for this one, we're just going to keep it with impression workflow up here and I'm going to open it up again. And in here, you guys, you can choose different type of brushes, which will give you different looks and just decide which ones that you like. There's, it's just so easy to customize each of these things to whatever it is that you think that you want out of your image. So for this one, again, I'm going to, I'm not going to touch my brush size because I don't see any white dots anywhere. Your paint opacity, do you want more paint? Do you want less paint? Do you want it more, you know, natural looking? If you reduce your paint, then you get more of like a chalk look, which I'm not really into. So I'm going to leave that somewhere around 54. Um, stroke width again, I can reduce that, but when you do, so you get your white spots. If you do that and you want your stroke width to be less, you have to come back and increase your brush size. And that's going to help you get rid of those white spots again. And once again, I'm going to get rid of the spill and the stroke length. I'll reduce that as well. Okay. And let's just see about lighting again. I want to reduce the brightness and click OK. Now, the reason why I reduced the brightness this time is because I'm really going to focus on the environment in this particular um, layer. So you can see the dots and everything, right? But we're going to just reduce, reduce, probably right about 50 again, okay? And once again, I'm going to add a mask using a black brush. I'm going to come in and just paint that back off of her. Kind of the same thing as before. You can decide if you want to keep more of that effect on your subject the second time around. And again, it's, you know, whatever you do, it's your art and you can apply these in different techniques and different ways every time and come up with a different look all the time. It's really fun. And for this, I'm just going to take it off of this a little bit. I know that when I take it off, it's going to make that image, those parts brighter. And just like that. And this is before and after. So you see we've added some more kind of depth to this. All right. And I'm just going to feather out my mask. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. And she's definitely too bright right so there's a couple things you can do duplicate your layer come into adobe camera raw using those amazing masking features again so come in here click on mask select subject oh it's better selection this time isn't it and then now what i'm going to do is just reduce those highlights and i'm not worried about them reducing it too much on her face because I can paint that back. And so here you can go decide exactly what you want, even for, let's say, um, a temperature or a color. So if you want to make her a little bluer, if you want to make her a little more yellow. The only thing that I wish was in this was being able to target colors like, you know, in the regular basic menu. That would be amazing. So if we add back some pink, it changes things a bit and yeah I think that's that's pretty good right about there so you can even add some clarity back to her dress if you want to so I'm going to do that a little bit and that's good to go click OK all right so that only affected her see how powerful that is oh my gosh guys I freaking love it but what I'm going to do is add a mask and just brush that light back onto her face like so see so before and after oh I just love that I think it's amazing 
So flatten, and then again, like I said, you could come in and do your color toning. I have never really been a huge fan of yellow per se, so I like to come into my hue saturation and really pull down the yellows, and it really changes the image, especially outdoor images where there's a lot of green and stuff like that. So as you can see, that's really helping that in that way. And then as far as reds are concerned, you can pump that up if you want her hair to be a little bit more bright. And you can see it's adding the red to her skin, but that's fine. We can brush that off. Yeah. So this is before and after. And just paint that off her face because it's, it's saturating her face, which has a lot of red in it as well. Okay, and you know, as normal, I would try and focus more on her. So adding a multiply blend mode, I'm just going to sample these colors in here and come in and just oh so gently darken down the areas of the image to keep the focus on our subject, right? Just sample the colors that exist in the image already, like so. Or however you want to do it, okay? So that's the workflow for a painterly portrait, and clearly this is really rough and dirty. It's not remotely good, but you get the gist. So let's go to this one okay so this is of course once again my beautiful little granddaughter this was her very first fairy portrait when she could sit up at six months old it was great because she couldn't really move or crawl but now we, I can't even take pictures of her because she moves too darn much um, let's again start in Adobe Camera Raw and just pull up the blacks pull up the shadows down the highlights a little bit, reduce the contrast a little bit, and I think that's pretty good. Click OK. So you can see she doesn't have wings on and I'm not going to bother applying them for this tutorial. I'm just strictly going to show you a few of the things that I would do in a normal workflow in making this a fairy portrait, okay? Um, what I am going to do is, because I want to make this part darker, so I'm going to right click New Smart Object via Copy, go back into Adobe Camera Raw by double clicking on that smart object, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to go back into my masking, select subject, let's see how Photoshop does, not too bad, good. <clears throat> Click on these three dots, invert it, because I want to focus on the environment. And I'm really looking to reduce that exposure, um, really reduce the shadows, reduce the contrast a little bit. But I really want it darker. Just, I want the background to be less of the focus point and more on the Kaya, right? So that looks really good. Click OK. Really good. So impressed with that masking capability. And okay, so go ahead and flatten. Now, I, I'm not going to go into how I would fix the background. I would definitely use my mixer brush. I would add in some fill for the empty spaces here, maybe add some water to the forefront. But for this particular tutorial, I just want to, I really wanted to show you the sharpen because even though it looks pretty good. It's really soft. So you can see here it's not tack sharp. It's not bad. And it's, you know, it's something that I'm happy to work with because I don't find it to be that distracting. But for this particular tutorial, I really wanted to show you what it would do. And I haven't used the new sharpening, so I'm kind of excited. So this will be my first one. I, I mean, I know this isn't... This isn't really 
like any motion blur or anything like that. But um, I but I don't really have any images I feel I could use at this point. So I'm going to come into my Topaz Sharpen and let's play. Let's see what it does. Okay, so what have we here? So this is before and this is after. That looks pretty freaking amazing, actually, doesn't it? Like now you really see how soft that was. And it's on the too soft normal one. And I'm going to assume you have motion blur, motion blur, out of focus, too soft, very noisy or very blurry. Let's try that one. I don't feel like this image is really blurry, but ooh, that really sharpened it, didn't it? That's actually pretty cool, but look what it did to her, her head. No, that's too much. That's definitely too much. I think this one too soft normal is the best for this one. So again, it's always based on your image. So you really need to find the right model that works for you. Um, remove blur. It's all suppressed noise. I don't see a lot of noise in this image. So I think that's good. So I know there's a lot of times where I would use this. I know a lot of you probably use the Photoshop sharpening, um, you know, using your linear light overlay. Let's just try that and see which one looks better. Just, just for funsies, okay? This might not be the best image for this example, but I'm sure I will use it in the future. Before and after. It's pretty good though. Okay, let's turn that off. Let's duplicate the bottom layer that doesn't have any sharpening. Um, change our blend mode to linear light and come up to filter other high pass. This is the one that I typically use after I finish my entire edit. It's obviously not something I do before. So you can see that this sharpening model does actually in fact add quite a bit of grain but if that were the case, I think you could safely go into denoise and get rid of that. So I'm going to click OK on this. So that's before and that's after. Turn that off. That's before. So yeah, Topaz is definitely more natural looking. I'm going to go with. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely, if you want, especially if you're making prints, because that looks good, but this just looks a little bit more natural. Let's try something for fun, just for experimenting. I'm going to delete the topaz one, turn on this one, and I'm just going to duplicate these two layers and merge them. So now I have this one and this one, right? What I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this one, call it layer one. I'm going to, now I'm going to come into denoise and see what it does with that additional noise that it added to this image and see if maybe you could do it that way. That might be, might be kind of interesting. So again, right now it's on clear because I think that's the last one I used. So what denoise is so good with is it will re remove the noise, but it also maintains and sometimes increases the sharpening a bit as well. So let's go low for noise on this one because it's not that much. And see what it looks like. Yeah, it really did. It's not bad. You know, had I done frequency separation first and, you know, retouched her skin, I think this would be perfect. I think it's pretty good. This has enhanced sharpness. Let's turn that to low. Yeah, I think that's great, guys. Click apply. Well, we just discovered something together, didn't we? Retouch first, then apply these two if you want, because you're not going to have all this wonky texture in the skin after you use like frequency separation or something. But I'd say that's still so much better than the original image that, you know, even though 
you open it up, it looks pretty sharp. It's not as sharp as it could be. Okay, so here we are. Let's zoom in. That's before, that's after. Turn both of those off so you can really see the difference. Okay, so that's before and after both of those. Highly recommend. Highly, highly. So I hope that this showed you the various uses for different products within Topaz. Um, I use it as part of my workflow most of the time now. I just, you know, in combination with masking in, in Adobe Camera Raw or even Lightroom if you use it, I think that these are just, you know, they're really stepping up tools in AI and making everything just so much better. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.